Hello, good morning, and welcome to Tata Literature Live, the Mumbai International Lit Fest, co-sponsored by Tata Steel and Tata Projects and powered by Godridge. At the end of today's session, we will have a short Q&A, so please drop in any questions that you may have in the comments section. Today's conversation is with and about two women who have lived and continue to live awe-inspiring lives and have blazed the trail for all of us to sprint down. Nina Gupta is a two-time national award-winning actor known for a number of commercial hits as well as critically acclaimed art house films. She is a well-known director and producer to boot. Ms. Gupta has recently written her autobiography, Sach Kahunto, a tell-all memoir chronicling the mountains and valleys of her personal and professional life. Dolly Thakur has won, worn a number of hats, theater actor, radio jockey, television newsreader, copywriter, model coordinator, casting director, newspaper columnist, and media consultant, and most recently, a memoirist. She has written of her life so far in the book, Regrets None, along with Argya Lahiri, our chair for today's session. Argya is a writer of plays, of books, of films, fiction and nonfiction. He has worked in the theater for over 20 years. Today, he will be unlocking the lives of these wonderful women. Over to you, Argya. Thank you very, very much. Uh, first of all, to Literature Live. Uh, thank you for having us. And thank you both these wonderful, wonderful women uh, for writing these books, uh, for having lived these lives. Now, uh, approximately 30 minutes isn't enough time to try and cover all of this, but uh, learning the lessons that the two of you have put down in your memoirs, we can but try. So I'm going to ask the first question, which is uh, not of critical, but of great importance to me because I'm interested. Uh, both of you uh, have had these incredible lives and careers. But in particular, because you found the theater very early on in your lives, and you came from a background where theater wasn't really something that people like you were supposed to access. So um, if I can ask you both in turn, what was it about the theater that drew you in when you were young? And what is it that has kept you coming back to the theater all through your lives? DT, can we start with you? Oh, most certainly. I'm senior, so I should speak <laughs> first. I figured um, that's what we should do, yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, I stumbled, I, I can't even say I stumbled into theatre. To me, it was not a career, it has never been. Um, uh, but I loved the attention that theatre gave me. I always loved being the centre of attention. And I started at the age of five. And there was no ambition. There was nobody in the family to promote it or uh, encourage me to do it. As people came and asked me, I did it. And that's become a part of my life. I mean, uh, seven decades is not too bad to last out. <laughs> uh, Nina, in your case, uh, you come from a family where your mom uh, prioritized education very much. She wanted you to be an IAS officer if possible. I was uh, amazed and uh, very, very delighted to learn that you, you are a Sanskrit scholar. Uh, you almost have a PhD, you have an MPhil, of course. Uh, and, but how does the theater then enter the equation uh, for you when you were growing up? And what was it that kept you coming back? So um, in college, we used to have college plays. Mm -hmm. uh, inter college competitions. And uh, I was so shy that I could never tell the people who were directing uh, in college that I am good. So they used okay. to give me very small role, like a servant's role, like uh, entry exit type of a thing. And uh, I used to sit for all the rehearsals. So I knew all the dialogues. So I used to go back home. And I used to say those dialogues of the main lead parts uh, in front of the mirror. And I used to think that I am much better than them. But I didn't have the guts, guts to uh, tell them that I uh, Then uh, School of Drama happened one day, like I've written in my book also. I saw Mr. Alkazi directing Satish Kaushik, who's my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was watching from the gallery. Uh, he was rehearsing with them. And I said, oh, I have to learn acting from him. But then it never happened and I joined School of Drama. And uh, then the theater bug happened and also uh, 
I did my MA MPhil in Sanskrit and my dissertation in MPhil was uh, stage techniques in Sanskrit drama theory and practice. So right. I wanted to combine my school of drama training and my Sanskrit training, uh, hmm. Sanskrit language training together. And unfortunately, I signed up for PhD, but I got a wrong uh, teacher uh, who was supposed to uh, look after my PhD thesis and I lost interest and then film happened. But uh, I have always recently also I have done uh, with Anupam Kher, Mera Wo Matlab Nahi Tha. Uh, so theater is something which is a very full, full fledged, full filling experience. Okay. Uh, as compared to films and television, uh, that is something else. This is something else. So whenever I'm very busy right now with uh, films and television, but if I get time, I always think of going back to theater. Okay. But so that's the passion part of it for both of you, the center of attention. It's something that's very fulfilling. And of course, it's very, very fulfilling for an actor. But how do we then? then get to a point and and there's about I would say about 15 years that separates the two of you in terms of age um, but how do women like you then start to approach careers of this sort what I want to try and understand from both of you uh, and DT first uh, again because of seniority uh, and then Nina what was it like being first of all what were the expectations when you were on the cusp of your careers about 22, 23, as you were coming to the end of your educational process. Were there real career opportunities open to you? Uh, sorry, DT looks like she's about ready to answer, so I'm going to ask her to go right ahead. Um, um, Arya, you've been concentrating on theatre, but my hmm. aim in life and my objective was always to be a, 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 on radio. I in see. Those days, there was no tell, us, tell us about this. Tell us about this, please. Why, why did you fact, want to be on radio? Uh, I, I I just wanted to be able to have people listen to me all the time and be able to communicate with them. And uh, um, talking about radio today in the midday, there's this whole write up about um, Hamid Sayani. Yes, Hamid it would have been his 95th birthday on the Twitch, yes. And he was the first person that I really wanted to be like and try to imitate. And, I didn't know who he was. We were in Hyderabad, but every Monday night at 10 o'clock, I would listen to Hamid Sayani. And as it happened years later, we turned out to be on the same platform. We became almost relatives. And, you know, I mean, the whole thing worked out. Uh, but Hamid Sayani was my first idol ever. And I always wanted to be an, uh, a, a Hamid Sayani. So it was broadcasting and radio right. that got me into this area of communications. And then theatre helped a great deal because right. it then taught you enunciation, it taught you uh, characterization, um, and it seemed to be a, 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 a very easy corollary to get into. And so right. for me, theatre and my broadcasting and then finally television were never indivisible. They were one. Uh, I see. What? But if I can then, if I can then come back, DT, and ask what, when you considered a career in broadcasting as a 20, 23 year old, given the background you were coming from, which was very middle class, no history of this kind of thing. And in India, there has always been this kind of uh, uh, aura of it being risky for young women to be in lines of work like this. What was that like? Did you think about it? Did you not care? Well, you know, um, uh, I started being on stage, debating, voicing myself from the age of 10, 12, 13, whatever. And uh, uh, at 14, 15, when I was in college, I was suddenly doing radio plays. I was doing, which again was something so new. One had never heard of anything like that. But and it wasn't that I went and said, I want to be, and there were no auditions and things, but I just showed an interest in this and people uh, selected me. Um, I loved some of the lines from the plays. Okay, Shakespeare right. thing, everybody quotes, but the one line which has stuck to me and I believe in it a great deal is the kindness of strangers 
It's a line from Kenneth Williams' um, uh, A Streetcar Named Desire. And I must say that that has propelled me right through life. And it's amazing where that one line, the kindness of strangers, has got me. It's, I, see. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, I mean, theater has been my life. I can't uh, uh, divert from that at all or diversify from that at all. But uh, it wasn't that I was a paid actress or I was uh, uh, selected. I, I did when I grew older and I got to know about the National School of Drama, how I envy these girls who've been to the National <laughs> School of Drama. But I never went to the National School of Drama. Uh, um, but I loved and as Nina knows, I've uh, used a lot of the Natural School of Drama in my other work, which was casting. Sure, and, uh, sure. Yeah, we, we will touch upon that in a bit. So Nina, I'm going to then ask the question. I, I was going to actually use that because you had the NSD and you segued and yours was very clearly about wanting to be an actor above and everything else. In fact, and we will hopefully touch upon it, your trailblazing career as a filmmaker came about because you were sitting around going, I need to develop work for myself, which is somehow some, which is how some of the best work in the world always emerges. But what was it like when you were at the, at the cusp of that decision to be uh, an actor, to pursue a life in the arts? What was the family like? Did you feel any fear? Uh, the fear was when I shifted to Bombay. Okay. Because I did not know anybody, uh, but I had my boyfriend with me who shifted, who mm -hmm. later on uh, uh, cheated on me and left me. But, <laughs> but, so I came with that Sahara that somebody is with me. Right. So what happened was, like when I was thinking I'll do my PhD in in stage acting, I was not interested in films uh, at all. Right. Then by chance we got a film called Adhar Shila where. Nasir, Anita, everybody was from theater were there. We shot in uh, Delhi. It mm -hmm. was like a gharka type of a film. We used to take our food, ourselves, etc., etc. So when I saw myself on the big screen, I said, Shit, this is what I want. <laughs> so from say I got the Khun Lagya movie and decided to come here. Now coming here, Again, uh, I did a lot of plays because there was no work in films. Now, now I want to say, such kahuto. Mm -hmm. I also opened a group, Sahaj, with Rajinder Gupta. We did some plays. So it was for a lot of people. I'm not saying for Dolly, Nasir, so many other people. I'm not talking for them also. Most of the time, what happened was that if we are doing a play and somebody got a role in a film or on a television series, they left us. We couldn't tell them ki ruk jao because we could not pay their rent. We could not pay them enough money. So basically in, in my time, when we used to hang around Prithvi Theater, we were all doing theater, waiting to get a role. If right. some producer, director will see us in the play, humko bulayega. So my days were those days because there was no television, no satellite television, no OTT, mm -hmm. nothing. So this, it was a very, very tough times and people couldn't afford to live on theater. So this is right. what happened. And that's why, and also another very interesting thing, such kahuto, I always think, why do I wear nice clothes when I go out? Why don't I wear my best clothes at home, sitting at home? I want appreciation. For every mm. moment of my life, I want appreciation from other people. So the appreciation I got in theater was these many people from right. film and from especially at that time television, that much people. So it was very, very, I was very, very happy. Because wh why am I doing? I am drawing room in the theater. I am not doing it. I am not not doing it. I am not I want everybody wants appreciation. I am not doing it. 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 I always appreciate my maids. Oh, wow, you have done well. So I am saying it's a very, it's a very, uh, you might laugh at my example, but I think this is what I have learned. 
that this is a basic thing. We want appreciation for right. what we do. Right. Okay. I, 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 we, we, I'm sensing the pattern here and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to hear it because also there is so much false modesty in the arts. That nay, nay, ye to sirf, matlab, in, it's inside my soul, etc., etc. I love it because and I think it also is a factor in how the two of you reached out for the things you wanted because you recognize this. I'm going to ask this one last time. I keep asking this. When we were working on, on Dolly's book, uh, Nina, uh, there's a story where she, the, the travel to London, which happened when she was 22, 23, came out of nowhere. Like one conversation, two days later, she had a passport because, again, kindness of strangers. Three days later, her sister worked for Air India, said there's a ticket. Her mom lent her money without any kind of real job or guarantee or certitude. She landed in London. I have known her for over 20 years. I turned to her two years ago and, and, and said, tell me honestly. Tell me you were scared because otherwise, how did you do this? And she said, no, what was that we scared about? So DT, I'll come back to you. Nina, I'm asking you at this point, aap sach kahenge to, um, was there fear? And I know the fear of coming to a strange city, of course, but embarking on a career course of this kind, saying I want to be an actor, when you look back upon it now, does it all make sense? Because, uh, of course, it, it didn't go to plan. And there have been wonderful accidents which have made your lives what they are. But tell me about the fear, especially being a young woman at that point in time in this country. Yeah. I, I am... Auntie, one sec auntie, 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 sorry. Auntie, I'll come to you one second. Yeah, I'm just going to ask okay. because I'm directing it to Nia and then I'll bounce it to you. Yeah, go ahead. Nia. I was very scared. I made a lot of mistakes because as I was very scared. Mm. Everything bad happened to me. Uh, every six months, I wanted to go back to Delhi in my mother's lap because right. I knew I could earn money. I'm educated. I don't have. I never had the fear of my bhuki marjau. Because uh, that fear was not there because of my education. Because hmm. I knew my roti to kamalungi or a room bhi le lungi, rent pay. Right. That is the reason why I did not compromise at certain times where I saw other women compromising. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I will go to this extent and not more. But it was very scary, very depressing. I was low. I used to go to the bathroom and cry. Then boyfriend left me, then this happened, that happened. Uh, uh, a lot of things happened. But the only thing, good thing was that I knew that I will not die and I will not do wrong things in my mind. If my heart is saying that this is wrong and I still do it, that I didn't do. Right. I did a whole lot of wrong things. I did uh, very stupid things. Uh, but at that age, you all do. But I was very scared. It okay. was scary. Yeah, very scary. Right. DT, may I, may I now open the question up to you? Tell me about feeling fear or the lack of it, etc., etc. Sorry to have shut you down when you begin. Never. 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 But I where, does this, never where does this come from? Fear. Where does this confidence come from? I have never from? felt nervous. I have gone into areas which I didn't know anything about. I right. went there, you know, with, with my smile. <laughs> if that's all I had, the only armor. And I've never felt scared. Even though I worked and I met some of the most eminent people and the most prominent people. And I, you know, I mean, imagine going to London. I didn't know any foreigners till then. And there was I with these working first from the uh, British Information Service in Delhi, where I was meeting a lot of uh, foreigners. But mm. I've never felt scared. And I think that comes from uh, the kind of, uh, with my father being in the Air Force, we were changing mm. cities and places every two years, every three years. And so you were being uh, 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 pushed into a strange situation with new faces, new people all the time. And, uh, uh, and then the kind of acceptance I got moving from, uh, Delhi to Hyderabad to Kanpur to Bombay. Um, what was there to be scared of? Right. In just joining the schools, I was leading parades. I was okay. I wasn't cast as 
Titania in uh, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream or a Snow White and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But I, I loved it that I was a dwarf. I loved right. it. Once. So, I mean, I've never been scared of anything. And, okay, I, and it's, okay there have been uh, pitfalls in one's personal life, perhaps, but none of it frightened me. I, right. I wasn't uh, 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 aspiring to earn millions or to start a business or any flop anywhere. Um, and I think that uh, is a terrific quality. And that's what I would like to tell my young listeners. That don't be scared of anything. There's nothing to be scared about. Do what you uh, want. That's a wonderful way of looking at it. I'm, I'm just going to ask a, a, a question here. Uh, I was talking about this session with somebody about a week ago, just going over the things that I would like to ask the two of you. And uh, they mentioned that around about the same time as, as Nina, you were kind of making your way to NSD and Dolly had, of course, moved to Bombay by that time. And I would ask the po both of you about Bombay as well, or Mumbai as well. But there also seemed to be around about that time a, a wonderful set of women like Protima Bedi, like uh, Eunice D'Souza, to name but two, um, who are also carving out these kind of identities for themselves. They, they refuse to accept the kind of limitations that society wanted from them and said, no, I want this and I'm going to go after this. So my question to you is, one, do you think that there was something going on around about that time, from, from the 70s to about the mid-80s, that was causing this kind of, so maybe it was just time that women uh, broke out of these, these structures and, and claimed things for themselves. So one is about the time, and two, uh, who are some of your idols and greatest teachers for, for you to have been able to do things like this? Uh, DT, if I could start with you, please. Well, look, you've mentioned Prothima. She was my closest friend. But she mm. wasn't somebody that I idolized or looked up to in any way. Um, when I was in uh, work, it, just out of college, uh, there was Praminda Premchand, who right. used to run a program called Date With You. I think it used to go out on Friday nights. And it was all about pop music and things. And she was my idol because she was very attractive to look at. She was divorced. She had two children and she ran a beautiful house. She invited uh, all the uh, uh, consulate generals and ambassadors to her house. She had parties, but that also was not just a question of having parties. She made, you learned so much through that. You know, if she was sort of celebrating any particular country, the meals that she served, the way she laid the table, the decor of the house, the books that she made you read, the, the uh, conversations that you had, all mm. concentrated on that particular country, whether it was Greece or uh, Italy or whatever. And uh, it's amazing how much I learned from her. And she, right. was, uh, and she was the first uh, uh, person in the media. She used to work for Voice of America at the time. I got my first assignment to uh, uh, review a book from her for Voice of America. Right. I was also with All India Radio, but All India Radio was very small. We'd just done the uh, auditions for All India Radio. and uh, But even there, I wasn't scared. I plunged right. into all of it. I did it. And I accepted it as all part of being young. And that this was a path that was opening up for me. So if at all, uh, Praminda Premchand would be the first woman that I really uh, adored. Uh, the right. others have been colleagues. Prothima was, right. was a colleague and Prothima was uh, seven years younger than I was. But right. I mean, the path that she's carved for herself is amazing. Or Mala right. Sen. Mala Sen was even right. younger than that. But Mala Sen, the mm. books she wrote, again, she took steps and, and journeyed into life and into the world. Um, you know, uh, okay, Mala had a, a family background which would support her, but she gave all that up. She right. she went off. She you know she didn't depend on that at all. Right. And these are women who were my best friends, and I've right. uh, uh, you know lived with them. They've been in my house in and out. Uh, uh, I mean, as 
Mala Sen has written these two books, which are very Bandit Queen. Who doesn't hmm. know Bandit? Sure. She wrote Bandit Queen. Sure. And I don't know whether the audience would be interested in knowing the first night she spent in London, she spent in my house. That's right. It's a wonderful she story about an elopement and and the green card playbook, so to speak. 17 years old at the time. And the right. last night that she spent uh, in a proper house and not a hospital was in my house. She went from mm -hmm. my house to the Tata Memorial, where a week later she was gone. So, I mean, right. but these were women who'd achieved so much. You up for the, uh, 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 you know, the, the uh, Black Power Movement in London. She uh, worked for the Bengalis. I mean, she, she yes. done an amazing amount of work. I wasn't involved in that work. And of course, there's your, there's your, sorry. Yes, I know. But you were surrounded by her. Yeah. Uh, there's also, of course, your, your grandmom and your aunt. Nina, if I can ask you about uh, role models, teachers, women who've had a tremendous influence on your life. Uh, <laughs> um... What I have seen that if you want to do what you really want to do and don't care about other society, this and that, then it always depends on how happy you are. Oh. If you are happy doing it or you are not happy doing it, but this is what you want to do it. Okay. Why I'm saying this, because I've known a lot of women who have taken a different path, not the traditional path, a different path, the path which their heart, uh, which their heart said, okay, you go, go there, have been very, very unhappy, which I have known. Okay. So I had this question always, like, I was a single mother, so... I couldn't go to a beauty parlor. I couldn't do things which a woman wants to do, uh, a normal woman wants to do. And I missed out on many things. But if today you ask me, for example, I am very uh, inspired by, say, Karina Kapoor. Right. Because I feel that if you got married, then your career was over. Okay. Now, here is this woman I see who's married to somebody who's divorced or whatever from, this is uh, second marriage. And all throughout the pregnancy she works, all throughout the COVID she works. She's become fit now again to work. That's what I had never seen before. So that's what inspires me. That this is what right. she wants to do and, and also to maintain a, a, a married life, which is so tough because uh, yeah, right. our married life, karlo, ya career, karlo, this is what we we had seen and we were taught. Right. And this is what we I experienced also. But I when I see people like her, now they are investing money, they are opening production companies, look at Alia at her age, look at uh, I'm giving examples because I see these people closely and not sure. what Dolly uh, knows or, uh, you know, I, I of know course. And uh, Anushka, they are opening their production companies. They, uh, they are not scared of anything like in my times, you know. Right. But maybe it was people like you and DT who opened the door a little bit more and now they're pushing their way through. I think. I certainly know that that is what a large part of the community feels. Um, and I just, so because we're at 1229 already, I'm just going to use this um, to pivot into the first of the audience questions that have already started to come in. Um, this is from Shubhrato Mukherjee. Earlier in this festival, and for both of you, earlier in this festival, Rebecca Solnit spoke about her essay, Men Explain Things to Me. So did you have difficulty trying to get men to take you seriously professionally. Nina, if I can begin with you, because also, you've also been a filmmaker, and that is different from being an actor. I mean, I, uh, I've spoken about this quite a lot in the last few years. Uh, I am a lighting designer also, and I know what hell my female counterparts still go through, even in an enlightened space like the theater in different parts of the country. So Nina, if I can begin with you, uh, did you have difficulty trying to get men to take you seriously professionally? 
No, I did not. Uh, I had a great experience. I, I directed SARS, which ran for three, mm -hmm. four years uh, and other things. And uh, there was a lot of good uh, feeling, a lot of respect for me because I, it is always give and take. But personally, yeah. no respect from men I got ever. Professionally, oh. I But, uh, can you is there is that just the relationships that you had or was it something that you saw around you was it the was it the uh, both, people both. was it a set of kind of no both both what i saw around me in my neighbors in my family with me uh, with my friends no respect especially is it just the patriarchy that you speak of uh, is that it is I a, mean, it is a, kind of patriarchy it is a kind of uh, thing where they have been brought up like that and okay. uh, especially for a working woman especially for a woman who can speak her mind who can buy a bag even if she has 10 bags mm. buy a bag. you know i'm right. trying to say, it's not a small thing anna yes absolutely so so Professionally, I had no problem. My, uh, uh, that sound record is ka jo assistant hota tha, I still remember More. He used to bring me food because I used to love uh, Junka Bakar. He used to bring it from home for me, for the shoot. I had beautiful experience in my professional space. Lot of respect. Many bola. झाड़ू लगाओ तो झाड़ू लगा देंगे क्योंकि मैं भी लगा दे लेकिन अगर पर्सनल लाइफ में मैं झाड़ू लगाती तो वो नहीं लगाएंगे यू नो व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से श्योर ओके डीटी आई डीटी आई एम गोना गेट आई एम गोना कम टू यू विद दिस प्रोफेशनल क्वेश्चन बट बिकॉज़ नीना हैज रेज्ड दिस आई एम गोना आस्क यू स्पीक अबाउट द पैट्रियार्की यू एनकाउंटर्ड व्हाइल ग्रोइंग अप एंड देन बीइंग बीइंग यंगर डू यू सी थिंग्स चेंजिंग नाउ is it the same is it worse is it better in different parts of the country and worse in different parts of the country you just want to just take a moment to think about that it is worse now according to me okay on the other hand i will say it is a beginning it will take centuries to happen okay it is a little beginning but what is happening now that when women have started basically it is all paisa finance right all finance रिस्पेक्ट भी आता है लव भी मिलता है पैसे से मैं ये भी मानती हूँ ओके सो इफ यू आर यू आर डूइंग वेल एंड देन आई हैव सीन सो मेनी वीमेन व्हेन यू स्टार्ट वर्किंग योर करियर इज ग्रोइंग यू डोंट वांट टू गेट मैरिड बिकॉज़ यू आर वेरी एक्साइटेड यू आर वेरी एंबिशियस बाय द टाइम यू वांट टू मैरी द मोस्ट ऑफ द गाइस हु यू वांट टू मैरी आर ऑलरेडी मैरिड सो देयर इज गोइंग टू बी अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम लाइक दिस नाउ लॉट ऑफ good looking powerful uh, financial independent women not getting somebody they want as their partner number 1 number 2 pehle to it was like division of labor woman is a nurturer she gives birth and man is a provider nowadays both have to earn mm. but we still have the thing that women earn also and they look after the house also they cook also and they earn also so they are in a worse situation now but on the other hand it is a beginning of at least not getting beaten up at least little things because you are financially independent which is happening pitchki i have okay. seen my own family my very very close own family she became a ca her mother in law used to say niche aloo lene mere se puche kyu nahi gayi she is a ca right. right right dt if i can pivot to you for both of these questions as well please the first being did you have difficulty trying to get men to take you seriously professionally never never <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I mentioned. knew what I wanted, <laughs> and I, 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 you know, I never felt inferior to them. If anything, the man is feeling inferior today because look where the woman has got. Look how much she's achieved. 
And in fact, we just had the Ladley Awards yesterday. And uh, uh, because I'm very involved in uh, women and children and Ladley. Mm. And the kind of essays that have come from remote parts of the country uh, telling us about the kind of lives that they've led and what they've achieved. It's amazing. Right what the woman today is able to do. So and I, in my own life, I've never felt threatened or inferior to a man. Uh, okay. There was a time when the man was paid more than we were for the same work that we did. But I remember that we took it up with organizations like Films Division, with All India Radio, to say, hey, why is there this discrimination? But uh, they went along and they changed as uh, the years went on. And okay. where, where, Sorry, and whether you asked about whether the world is better today, uh, as I said, the men are feeling inferior, therefore they feel threatened and they raise the kind of questions or the kind of attitudes that they have, but it is in no way going to reduce the woman. She is much stronger today and she's going to go ahead. Okay, I, do you, uh, anything about the patriarchy that Nina mentioned while growing up in the attitudes around you, perhaps in your family or things that you saw about you how know, women come, were treated in the personal space? Sorry, go ahead. Um, I come perhaps uh, from a family of strong women. Okay. We were all the, my grandmothers, my aunts, they were all doers. They were working women. And right. while I had a grandfather and I had a father who brought in all the... Um, perks with the B and the defense services, etc. But they were such beautiful people. They, they, they never forced themselves onto us. They never told us that there was a discrimination between man and woman. And the woman uh, made all the decisions in, my, in our home, at least certainly. And uh, so you never felt that there was any kind of discrimination uh, uh, or, or difference between being a man or a woman, you know? Uh, and I'm so glad because that's what's given me the courage to do what I did in life, to achieve what I have in life. And right. um, uh, also to accept people for what they are. Right. Um, I'm uh, not judgmental. I try not to be judgmental. Um, uh, but, but, you know, I accept everybody. I tolerate every. I wouldn't say tolerate because that's a horrible word to say. But they all, I mean, you know, I have... Uh, I embrace everybody and I, right. I don't have any uh, uh, look being a human being of course you might say um, uh, be critical about a particular person's uh, uh, decision or something but that doesn't make them smaller or you bigger you're entitled to your opinions but it is the world is there for everybody and there are opportunities for everyone I see. I, I, it's quite interesting that, I mean, that's quite a privileged place to come from, as Nina indicated. I find that very, very interesting. Uh, carrying on, uh, ladies, because it's just a time limit thing, because we could do this for hours, clearly. From Jessica Vakil, and this time I'll ask uh, DT the question first. What is the one thing you would have done differently if you had a chance to go back in your life? Nothing. No. Ah. I would have led my life exactly as it is, and I'm very proud of being who I am. There's nothing I would do differently. Fantastic. Nina, if there's one thing you could have done differently, if you could go back in your life? I should have been an IRS officer. <clears throat> oh, really? And uh, on the side, I would have learned singing and dancing. But I feel I could have done wonderful things as an IAS officer because I have realized I am very good at certain things and uh, very good at organizing. I feel I could have done better there. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is, that's very, very interesting uh, because the follow-up question, and I'm going to ask Nina this first, uh, from Pratima Mehra is having achieved so much in your lives, what is the one thing you still look forward to? Perhaps an unfulfilled ambition or something that gives you hope and energy. Uh, so I think it's two parts. One is the unfulfilled thing, which might be this IIS thing, but what is something that you look forward to that, that gives you hope and energy? I have got my uh, so-called break in movies at 60. I have a lot of work now. 
and right. I always pray and I look forward to that I should take care of my health because I'm much older so that whatever work I'm getting I'm able to do and enjoy it and number two like every mother I want uh, good things to happen to my daughter that's these are the two things uh, I look forward to nothing else fantastic uh dt if i can ask you the same question having achieved so much in your life what is the one thing you still look forward to uh, and perhaps an unfulfilled ambition or something that gives you hope and energy well what i look forward to is that i'm not a nuisance or dependent on anybody for the few years right. that are left to me. and uh, i have a wonderful set of friends my son and my son's friends, which includes you, Argya, and lots of others. Uh, uh, but I'm, I know that I'll be looked after. I have nothing to worry about. That's fantastic. And in fact, this kind of very sweetly brings us to the one thing that you guys, both of you, always get asked about. And the one thing that I was very glad that we didn't touch upon in the, the not make it the biggest point, but uh, if, because we've got about a couple of minutes, being single parents uh, for both of you, um, just, I mean, there is no real question uh, and there is no question that you, as in one question that I can ask, but tell us a little bit about being a single parent, the, the choice to do it uh, and what it was like. Uh, Nina, if I can start with you. Uh, I always tell other people never do it what I did because it okay. is very tough. And also I think it's very selfish to do what I did. Uh, if I think of my daughter, oh, right. she doesn't have another family, who oh, family keep family. Like I always feel that if I die, there is nobody to look after her because I, she doesn't have a sibling also. So I feel that in my, that kind of time when, you know, your hormones are like that and you fall in love, you don't listen to anybody. You don't listen. My friends used to say, don't do it, don't do it. But I think I have been very selfish and I would not advise anybody to do, do it. Okay. DT, what about you? Being a single parent, making that choice, everything that I don't followed. think I've been selfish. I wanted it. I did it. And I uh, have surrounded my son and myself with the kind of people who would accept everything. And I hope that it's given my son confidence and I'm very proud of what he's achieved and what he's done. And uh, uh, I must say, we, we never discussed what he's been deprived of, but I also had the advantage of the entire family of his father and his father accepting him, even though we didn't sign a legal piece of paper or anything. So I hope that, that, uh, 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 that other people will be able to get that advantage out of making decisions that they do because uh, uh, I, I have never relied on anybody's money. I've never relied on anybody's reputation. Everything is mine, and I don't think I've done too badly. And I hope that my son is not going to hold it against me. Right. I don't think either of them do. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a wonderful thing. I've, one last question has come in, and I think it's a perfect one, because I think we've heard two extraordinary things that have so many similarities and yet so many differences, and that's how like the world should be. Um, there's a question from Shaheen Kutbuddin, uh, my apologies. What is the one piece of advice you would give to young women? Live their lives the way they want it. Not depend on, oh my God, I don't come from this family, I'm not fair, I'm not rich, I'm not educated. There are opportunities for everybody, and go ahead and do it. Don't feel insecure. Don't be full of complexes. Go ahead and do what you want. The, the world is there for you. And it's amazing how the world accepts courageous people. Super. Nina, one piece of advice that you'd give young women today? Yes, which I have said uh, repeated many times in my book also. Uh, and because of which I suffered a lot in my life is to have self-esteem. Right. Most important. I right. never, so I suffered. So this is what I keep telling whosoever, like especially my daughter. Every time I have to put it in her head, self-esteem, you are the best. 
Right, fantastic. And I think actually that both pieces of advice when you come down to it are exactly the same thing. Uh, I just want to take one minute, ladies, if I may, uh, before I hand it back to Kokila, because we're at the end of our allotted time. Uh, and I think I speak for all three of us. I just wanted to thank Literature Life for this opportunity. Also very much want to thank and remember both Anil Dharkar and Shashi Baliga, because I think they would have been thrilled to bits with this particular session, given their relationships with DT, with Nina, and with me, because I'm also a participant at Literature Life. So we thank I, them, we remember them. Yes, yes, DT. Uh, I particularly want to remember and think of Anil Dharkar. Mm. I almost met from the time that we both arrived from England and started our lives in Bombay together. And right. uh, in some ways, we've, our paths have crossed always. And I am sad that he's not here to read my book. Yeah, me too. Lot, yeah. Because I would have loved Anil to have been part of this. Right. Well, love and peace and light to both of them. Thank you very much. That was enthralling. Uh, Kokila, I think it's time to hand it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arya. And thank you so much to our speakers for today. I am going to continue today with a huge smile on my face. I, um, as someone at the beginning of her career, am feeling so empowered after this conversation. I feel so lucky to have witnessed it. Um, two such converse opinions about such similar things that are just inspiring to women everywhere. Thank you to our audience for joining us today um, and all our partners that made this possible. Tata Literature Life, co-sponsored by Tata Steel and Tata Projects and powered by Godrej, continues with more sessions for today. So please check out the website and uh, the books mentioned in this session are available um, on the website of our knowledge partner, landmarkexcite.com. So please go and shop there. Um, thank you so much for being here today. And again, thank you for an enthralling session.